China's Three Gorges Mega Dam Corporation is now producing 100 gigawatts of power. Clean energy accounts for about 96% of the total output of the Three Gorges hydroelectric power plant. Officials say the increase in power will help with the country's winter energy needs through to into the spring. This milestone comes as the China and the U.S. agree to cooperate on a range of climate issues, including the transition to clean energy at the recent COP26 summit in Glasgow. Well, for more on China's commitments to green development, let's bring in Changhua Wu, CEO of the Beijing Future Innovation Center and executive director of the Professional Association for China's Environment. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. So for people who aren't familiar, talk about the importance of the Three Gorges Dam operation and the power that's generated from it. Well, the Three Gorges project is not only China's largest, but also the world's largest hydrological engineering project. Uh, it has dammed uh, China's longest river, the Yangtze River, and uh, particular for two purposes. One, to regulating and managing the water flows of the Yangtze River, and uh, partly actually, of mostly back then actually, to for flood control. Of course, in the meantime, it generates uh, uh, hydroelectricity as well. And uh, since its completion in the early, 20, early 2000, the, Yance, the, the dam definitely has played a big role in terms of regulating uh, the water flow of the river. And uh, to a large extent, it, help, it has helped to mitigate uh, the, the flooding, uh, particularly on the Yangtze River, over the decades. Uh, but in the meantime, actually, we do, I do want to point to the other side. It's not all positive story, but we all know uh, the, three, the, the dams are built at the expense of, the, of nature, ecosystems, and also by sacrificing local community and the culture there as well. Uh, so now, not only for the clean energy purpose, the climate change purpose there, but also for nature, biodiversity conservation, I think this is the moment that we need to reflect more and more, uh, you know, it, around actually particular large-scale dams and their impacts and, uh, on nature in particular, and trying to figure out how to make sure we will be able to manage the trade-offs among different purposes. On one side, we do need the clean energy. Uh, as much as possible because we need to fight climate change. On the other side, we do need to take into full consideration actually of the nature and the, uh, nature conservation and the ecosystems. So then given these trade-offs, as you mentioned then, where do projects like this fit into China's overall commitments to cleaner forms of energy? It definitely has a big role. If you look at hydropower in, in China's energy structure, and uh, back in 2018, I think it provided uh, about 18% of the electricity generated in China overall. And the coal, by the way, actually to put, put coal into the picture, coal now today counts about 56% of China's electricity generation there. So for this country, for China to really bend the emission curve, of carbon emission curve, particular for this decade, which is very urgent. So clean energy definitely is the only way forward, and hydropower has a big role to play. And uh, already, uh, China has pretty much dammed almost all the rivers, and Three Gorges is the largest one. So hydropower has been, and will continue to be, having a big important role in China's clean energy trans trans transformation or transition. But as I said, in, you know, in the meantime, we have to look carefully into the trade-offs on one side, we do need to manage the existing dams project, but in, um, at the same time, actually, we do need to reflect and uh, trying to figure out actually what are the potential new threats, risks we need to ma manage, particular, you know, in the intensified climate change impacts, as well as for the purpose of pr protecting ecosystems. And as well as risks, you also have the adoption of some of these new technologies. What can governments do to mitigate any issues in transitioning to cleaner energy alternatives? Well, China definitely has been uh, making tremendous effort at trying to accelerate uh, the clean energy transition. Uh, of course, the hydropower is only part of it. And if you look at uh, renewable energy, in particular around the actual wind and the solar, China has been uh, gearing up tremendous uh, pace, actually, to scale in order to bend the curve, as I mentioned. And uh, policy uh, laws, regulations, policy incentives are already put together. And now China, particularly putting into the COP26, Glasgow, the, uh, the UN Climate Conference. So China has made its new commitment and uh, with the time-bound efforts 
persons. Actually, a few highlights there. So by 2025, China's coal consumption definitely cannot go up anymore. So that's roughly a capping year, and then starting to uh, to you know reduce decline. And by before 2030, the country has committed to peak its overall carbon emissions. And before 2060, we need to achieve carbon neutrality. So we have this sort of rough time bound targets there. So around that, the, the, the whole country is literally reorganizing itself around its energy, national energy system, and trying to figure out how to make sure we really, you know, the whole system will be able to help drive the, the transition at a much faster pace there, and particularly to put clean energy at the core part of the national policy making process, and uh, which is not a very easy task. And uh, back to the coal situation, uh, you probably probably heard a lot about the noises and debates uh, in Glasgow last minute around the term face out or face down coal, uh, literally by the end of this decade there. So China has a tremendous you know, challenge on the table, right. trying to figure out how to balance actually energy security, energy supply, uh, you know, the economics of the energy. But in the meantime, actually, we have to really address the biggest puzzle uh, on the table, which is the carbon emission fighting climate change. Indeed. Well, we do appreciate your insights. Changhua Wu there, CEO of the Beijing Future Innovation Center and Executive Director of the Professional Association for China's Environment.